less than a week ago, I appeared on Piers Morgan. And they asked me to come on and be part of a debate. And I like coming on Piers Morgan. I like being part of debates. I love engaging people like Candace Owens and uh, Rabbi Shmuley and these other uh, people with whom I have stark political disagreements. I love to jump on the air with them and duke it out. Um, particularly on these platforms that grant access to wider audiences so they can hear good arguments. But, whew, I was on Piers last week and I got to tell you, it was wild. Um, where do I start? I mean, the whole, the whole setup is fascinating because, you know, you go there. I was in a, my son was in the hospital that day, so we were, um, they, they sent a, a truck out, so I'm like, hadn't slept much. There's a whole lot of things going on. I, I certainly wasn't at my sharpest, but um, there's like the technical difficulties of everything, like of there being a sound delay on my side. There's the fact that Piers has a, a kind of penchant for, uh, if there's a guest who has a side he agrees with, he doesn't interrupt them. If he disagrees, he interrupts you every 10 seconds. So there's a way that you're constantly being, um, um, sort of pushed in different directions. I'm used to it. I've been on Fox News for a million years. I mean, from a million years ago, I was on Fox News. So I, I, I'm i used to that. I just don't enjoy it. Um, but still, I, I was happy to be on the platform and I was happy to have this, uh, I think, powerful and interesting conversation. It went in lots of directions. It started off about Diddy, which was crazy. And we'll talk about that later. Um, but one of the moments that struck me the most was around Kamala Harris. Um, so I was invited on the Piers Morgan show with Candace Owens and podcaster and former rapper or current rapper, a legendary rapper, Lord Jamar. Uh, and one of the topics was about, uh, President Obama's speech to black men, the one I addressed that a couple weeks ago, uh, telling them that they have a responsibility to vote for Kamala Harris. Uh, Piers asked Lord Jamar for his response, uh, to that call. Uh, and Lord Jamar gave an analysis um, that was troubling to me, not on Piers Morgan, but he'd already given the analysis, which is why he was invited on to Piers Morgan. And in the analysis, he calls Kamala Harris the B word. So anyway, watch the clip and see for yourself. I don't want y'all to think I'm exaggerating. I don't want y'all to think I'm being dramatic. I don't want y'all to think I'm, I'm not telling the whole story. Watch it for yourself. I feel that she's so bad that guess what? I might just go f around and vote for Trump. And this is my first time saying this out loud. But y'all think you're going to shame somebody or bully a into voting for this? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And now I'm going to be, now you're going to make me be Mr. Anti. You keep coming at me with this bullshit. You keep coming at me talking about, oh, it's a shame that you're not supporting a black woman. She's not black. Now, Mark, you know, <laughs> let me ask you honestly, Mark, if this had been the other way around, if this had been, get... if it, hang, hang on, Jamal, uh, Lord Jamal, I'll come to you in a sec. I, I just want to get their reaction to what we've just played because it's gone viral, as I said. But Mark, you know, if it had been the other way around, if you had a former white president saying, you've got to vote for Trump if you're white, you'd have gone absolutely nuts. So why is it okay for Barack Obama to order black people to vote for Kamala Harris, given how unpopular she currently is to the extent where Trump is ahead in five of the seven swing states? Why should they? So a couple of things. Uh, first, um, no one should vote for anybody based on identity politics. You should never vote for somebody because so Obama's they wrong. are black, right? I... Yeah, Obama's wrong. I mean, it's, I, didn't, I didn't vote for him. I, I love not, that. Like, oh, Obama's wrong. Yeah, Obama's wrong. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Um, we all agree. But I... But, I, but, I, but, I, but, I, but no, we don't... So cable news is so funny, right? The first thing is that there's this idea that everybody has to be on one side or the other, that, that you're either liberal or, or, or conservative, Democrat, Republican, so... It's a, so Obama's wrong as if that like paints me into a corner where I, I, I'll be afraid to say it. Like, I don't a damn, yeah, Obama's wrong. But their reason for saying Obama's wrong is different than my reason for saying Obama's wrong. 
you know, I don't want to pathologize black men. I don't want to demonize black men. I don't want to make it seem as if black men are uh, failing in their democratic responsibilities to vote for Kamala Harris. That's all ridiculous. Um, and that's the narrative that Obama's advancing. They're advancing. Candace Jamar and Piers were advancing this argument uh, somehow that um, around, you know, Obama's ordering black people to vote for Kamala because she's black. And it's like, no, that's actually not what's happening either. He's not saying vote for Kamala because she's black. The argument is vote for Kamala because you're black. In other words, he's making a case that Kamala Harris is in the best interest of black people. He would make the same argument for Hillary Clinton. He would make the same argument for Joe Biden. Not that she's black, but that if you're if you are black and care about your own interests, vote your interests. Now, the question is, is that your interest, right? Is Kamala Harris your interest? Is Hillary Clinton your interest? Of course, no. Is is Joe Biden your interest? No. So you can disagree with Obama, but don't but disagree with them on the proper terms. But none of that for me is the point. My issue, my concern, my concern is Lord Jamar saying this. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to um, I'm going to play it for you uh, one more time because I found this to be quite, quite disturbing. L listen to this take one more time. So bad that guess what? I might just go f around and vote for Trump. And this is my first time saying this out loud. But y'all think you're going to shame somebody or bully a into voting for this? That's the part. That's the part that I can't rock with. You're going to shame a nigga into voting for this boop B word. And then when we come back from the break, Pierce and Candace only want to talk about the race part of it. They only want to talk about Obama. They don't want to talk about the fact that he just called Kamala Harris a B-word. These are people who berate rap music. These are people who talk about all the misogyny and rap music, talk about all the hatred in black culture, all the blah, 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 blah. When it's time to beat up on black people, they're quick to do it. But somehow, in this exchange, the fact that he just openly and internationally declared that Kamala Harris was the B-word shook no tables to them. It inspired no frustration in there. No curiosity to ask, why would you do that? No visceral reaction to say, yo, this was crazy. How could you do that? There was nothing. And this is my issue. This is my fundamental problem. You can disagree with Kamala Harris. I do. You can say, she's not my kind of candidate. Fine. You can say, she's a bad candidate. That's your opinion. You can say, I'm not voting for her. That's democracy. And we can have debates about who to vote for, who not to vote for. But for you to publicly, Lord Jamar, stand up and publicly declare that she's a B word. That is so out of pocket. That is so disrespectful. And you know better. And when I challenged him on why he called it a B word, he said, well, you know, it was a different platform. It was more of a hip hop platform. As if to say, oh, I was just calling her a B in front of black people, or I was just calling her a B in a hip hop podcast. It wasn't on international TV. Cause you know, black people, some black people, you know, they get on international TV, they get on cable news, they change their diction, they change their speech. And look, we all code switch, I ain't mad at that, but I'm saying switching codes is different than switching our principles. How are we gonna say that we here for black people and even criticize her or question her blackness while declaring a black woman to be a B? She didn't deserve that. Nothing she's done. If you want to call her a genocide, go ahead. You want to call her a fascist or neo-fascist, go ahead. You can make a political argument for that. We can agree, we can disagree. You can call her a neoliberal. We can agree, we can disagree. We can have those conversations. Because I've used those words. For her, for Biden, for Clinton, for Obama, for Biden. So I'm with you. We can use political critiques, even if they're aggressive and even if they make people unsettled. But to stand up and disrespect this woman, and particularly for Lord Jamar, who's a 5% of somebody who says the black woman is the God of the universe. Well, he's the sun and she's the, you know, the moon. That she's the queen and she's the earth. And which was to uplift and protect and love black women. To call her a bee because you don't like her politics? That's wild to me.
And it's it, and it's that kind of misogynistic and race anti-black narrative um that lends legitimacy to the point that Barack Obama was making, which is black men need to stand up in, in both their interests and not their misogynoir. Now, again, I don't agree with Obama's approach or his analysis, because his analysis presumes that anybody who doesn't vote for Kamala Harris is doing so because they because of uh, identity policies or because of a hatred of black women, as opposed to maybe they don't like genociders. Maybe they don't like blah, 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 right? Any legitimate political critique that we could levy against anybody. But, but when I hear stuff like this, man, it, it makes the case. It, it makes the case. Jazz LP said it was easy for him because it goes all women to be. Sadly, you might be right. Bullet the Bunny says it was a setup to get you defending VP Harris from the racist, sexist dog whistle. Sound guy was an op. Piers was disgusting. Yeah, I, I, I think I agree on every single count. I tend to agree with Bullet the Bunny on most things.